We're live. Okay, so first of all, I found you through, I'm pretty sure, one of my friends' follower list, right? Okay. And, you know, I came across your content, and I'm like, you know what? I have to reach out to this guy. You make a lot of cool stuff, and for the audience that doesn't know you, I want you to introduce yourself. <laughs> first of all, thank you. Thank you for the kind words, man. I really appreciate it, and I'm really grateful also. Um, nice meeting you also. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm a, I'm a drummer. Uh, I currently live in Bulgaria, Europe, and I've been actually I've been a drummer my whole life, and that's something I've always wanted to do for a living. And I think now is a, I can finally do that after COVID and stuff like this. Yeah. So how did you? Okay, so let's go back. So number one, is this the first podcast you've ever done? Because I don't think I've seen any other interviews of you. Uh, no, no. Uh, years ago uh, in Bulgaria, I've uh, I've done a couple of shows, like TV shows, with my older bands, and I had I actually went on Bulgarians Got Talent two years ago, and we've done some interviews uh, during the screening and some other podcasts, but all of them are were in Bulgarian, so this actually my first time speaking in english during the podcast yeah i mean this it doesn't seem like you speak much in most of your videos because it's mostly focused on the music it gets straight into it yeah. which there's nothing wrong with it's just you know it's not it's not you talking to the audience it's not like most creators you're just going straight to making music which is awesome and yeah, it's yeah. very cool when you know you get straight into lincoln park and nirvana mixes on the drums you know it's it is very cool and I've been Thanks. a fan of that type of music, mixing, no problem. Yeah, it's. I've always been a fan of mixing and mashing up music, you know, different remixes, things like that. Mashups, especially when you mix two songs that you don't think would work together or kind of work together, but you don't see it at first. And then somebody takes them and mixes them up. It's cool. So explain a little bit about how you started making those videos, how you got, and as well as how you got into doing the drums and music. Yeah. Um so i got into drumming like maybe 15 years ago when i was uh not even a teenager yet but uh i've always listened to that style that kind of music and i've always liked the drums and i just thought of why not why not give it a go and i've always tried to pursue a career in music but it's kind of difficult here in bulgaria uh, then COVID hit. I really had the intention of leaving Bulgaria, but then, of course, the, the the lockdown happened, and the only way I could pursue a career in music was just start making videos. And I started working on that, and things just kind of happened. And well, when you have the passion for it, just drumming all day kind of uh comes more natural just recording the stuff you already play in the rehearsal room well that's all and it's it's good that you're doing this right because it you're following your passion right that's like you, you're doing what you want to yeah. yeah most most people do not do that do, they do not do what they like and it's very happy it's very good to see someone that is now you mentioned being on bulgaria's got talent now you don't hear much of, yeah so you don't hear about much much about bulgaria as a country right so it, yeah. it, you're like one of the first people i've met that have actually been from there so bulgaria's got talent how is that different from america's got talent like what happens if you win bulgaria's got talent because with america's got talent i think you get like a contract is that the same way in bulgaria do you get to like go to a, a bulgarian record label for example how does it work uh no it's just like the the exposure of people seeing you on tv and if you manage to win that's like 50 50 000 leva which i think is around 25 uh thousand thousand dollars yeah so that's mainly it that's only the the prize money and a little bit of exposure that you get from that but it was a cool experience i got to work with some real professionals and i really got the exposure i needed in bulgaria and it did help me get some gigs 
uh, right here in like a local level. Do people recognize you on the streets? Because you have a decent follower count. Uh, I mean, it happens, and I'm extremely grateful for that. It's really interesting when it happens. But uh, the the majority of my following, I managed to, uh, I managed to uh, get is mainly from other countries uh, and from the reels I make and the posts, I, the, the content itself. So it's not mainly from Bulgaria. Well, it's funny because I mean. People that I know personally, I told this story, but um, I don't know if you know him, but there's a guy named Jeremy Fragrance, right? He's like a cologne, like influencer. Do you know who he is? No, I don't think I'm aware of that, no. Okay, well, his, anyways, I saw him. I was in uh, Miami. I was in Florida, right? Cool, and cool. I, I see him and my interaction with him, like, I look at, I look in the distance and he has a very unique look to him. Blonde hair, very bright white pants. And I see him and he's coming and I'm like, Oh, that guy looks a lot like um, Jeremy. And then <laughs> next thing I know, he gets closer to me. And I'm like, oh, that is Jeremy. He was on his bike. He was with his girlfriend. But I didn't want to say anything. But he, I, I looked really confused because I didn't expect to see him there. And he guess he realized that I recognized him. And he goes, yes, yes, hello. And then I'm like, hello. Um, but is that the guy? Is that the guy who uh, you said Jeremy Fragrance who does like TikToks about fragrances and stuff? Yes yes oh yeah i think i've heard of him yeah yeah he's really cool uh, yeah he goes he, um, he says yeah he says power you know he's like very thick german accent yeah yeah, but, yeah, not yeah. yeah i it was just and i i saw him a second time too i didn't want to bother him like i said i just said hi yeah. and that was it if he was on the street if he was walking i would have said something more direct like hey do you want to work together but or you want to take a photo but you know i don't i don't like to come off as like too too much of a fan you know, <laughs> yeah, not that there's yeah. anything wrong in it, but it's like they're just people. So, you know, anyways, when it comes to your interactions with fans, you know, because mine was like a very confused one. <laughs> do you do you get people that kind of like give each other looks and they realize it's you, or they know you immediately, or are they like, oh my gosh, you're this guy, or how does it? How what do they say to you when they come up to you? Um. Well, it's, I mean, it's different every time, but the majority of times is people really being respectful, as you said, and which is really cool because uh, I had drumming gigs for Bulgarian stars uh, during the years, uh, like big artists here in Bulgaria. And I've seen so many people not being respectful, respectful enough to them. And just like uh, pointing and oh, you're that guy from that thing, and they're like, yeah, and it's just sad at, at times. But uh, I've had only positive reactions and positive interactions with people um, to this day, which is really cool, and I really, really appreciate appreciate all of it. Yeah, I also teach drums at a at a school here in Bulgaria, and uh, I have they had students uh, uh, that that came after the the Bulgarians got talent after the the Instagram thing blew up, and they've all be, been really kind and really have an interest to to start drumming and uh, pursue a career in music, and I try to give them all that I can. <laughs> So yeah, well, when it's it really positive. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it seems like you're doing a lot in person, like locally, right? On a small level, right? You're doing other bigger things too, but it also seems like you're, which it, it's rare to see someone that's just doing things very locally, like town, few cities, right? You know, yeah. sometimes, you know, I've met people that go everywhere to do everything, right? And there's nothing wrong yeah. with that, but it's it just, it's a unique thing to see, to see someone so sure. local. The only person I can think of that's somewhat similar is a kid I had on. Um, his name is Wheelie Feed, or Jared Locke is his name. Um, he's a 16-year-old South African stuntman. Anyways, he he um, he um does talk a lot about how, like, most most all the stunts he does are locally, right? It's okay. on a private yeah. road. Yeah, all the stunts he does are locally, and... Uh, yeah, he talks about like meeting people and how people recognize him, and he barely shows his face too. Yeah. So, yeah, 
I mean, with you, you're always showing your face. So do you, <laughs> my question is, do you meet people a lot then? Or are you meeting people like every here and there? Um, I mean, a lot of my interactions are during like concerts and stuff. Cause I, I did uh, a lot of gigging last few years here in Bulgaria. Uh, and, I, and I still do, but uh, the last maybe one or two months, I tried to focus mainly on my studio work, just to even improve myself and my drumming as much as I can, and uh, just stay in the studio more. But a lot of the interactions are just doing concerts, because the, the going out I do is mainly when we have like a tour or just we're playing somewhere we we can. Yeah, mainly, yeah, you can say uh, not on a daily basis, but just do it during the touring we do. Do you often travel to the United States for anything, or is it only in Bulgaria? Man, I that's my like childhood dream to visit the United States, but I have never been to the States. No, it, when I first started drumming, that was my goal, number one. And it still is, but it's like really hard to get a visa and the political stuff of things. So uh, I have never been to the States. Yeah. How come? Like not even for like a trip. How come you don't? You got you to gotta have a visa. So I can't get just like a tourist visa that easily. And I haven't even tried, but I've heard that it's difficult, really difficult. Okay. So yeah. have you tried, but have you tried, like, have you gone through the process of getting a visa yet? No, no. I just looked the things that you need and you got to have a really solid reason for just visiting the States, which I have not gotten to this point. Maybe if I get like an, a job offer in music, uh, that would be the that would be really my number one goal, just to get a visa and to get to the States. But uh I haven't got that now. That's a shame because I feel like a lot of your audience is in the United States too. And if you had concerts here, a lot of people would come. You know, I, I definitely would. You know, so if you had, Thanks, a, man. yeah, no problem. If I had, um, like, I mean, if you were to do, I mean, this would be really hard, but if you were to do like a concert in New York, for example, or Miami or, you know, a big city, right? I feel like you definitely have. A decent level of pull with that um you know if you ask or have an offer i feel like you definitely get through with that which is a shame because you know i do like what you do so if i were to say that like what what's the time span that you want to try and get a visa i think maybe a month or something a month tops and i think you can get even a quicker uh I, you can get a visa even quicker, but a month stops. So you want to get it for a month and. But OK, because I, I don't understand how immigration works or with traveling. Why can't because in the United States, if I have a passport, right, and I go to let's just say I go to Bulgaria, right, yeah. I can just go there and stay at a hotel and then do go about my business and then fly back yeah how is the diff how is it different with people to the united states you always need one why can't you just use a passport i, I have no idea <laughs> but uh, it's easier to go from the states to uh, a european country then it's easier to go from a new european country to to the states you definitely need a pre-approved visa that they need a lot of information for you from you to give you one and it's a li really long process and a hard one too i've heard but just political stuff i'm not really into that right okay so it's difficult but when when would you see yourself getting one like in the next 
10 years, five years? Oh, as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, I'm really working towards finding uh, a job as a drummer or a spot as a drummer in the States and hopefully coming there as soon as, soon as possible. Because, as I said, that's like my childhood dream, just to, to come to the States. And I've met uh, some people online, we've been talking, and they really advise me to come to the States. So I'd love that as soon as possible. Well, why not post on your story or something like, you know, hey, if anybody, because, I mean, again, you do definitely have a very big audience, right, at least much bigger than most people 99 percent of the people on instagram so you know if you're posting if you're posting your story let's just say hey if anybody has experience with getting a visa dm me right because that's what i would do i would say if anybody can help me out please dm me or if anybody you know has an experience in this whatever dm me that's what i would do right or if anybody has any gig offers or in the united like once you finally get through that i would say then on your story say like if anybody has any offers or gigs in the united states message me or my manager or whatever that's that's how i would go about it if i were you because you do have an audience and i would use that to your advantage yeah actually i've never thought of that yeah that, that's a great idea i might do this in the in the near future yeah yeah i mean I, you know, do want to help you with that because I do think that people would definitely like your music. I mean, I only, you know, I don't Thanks. have, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a super, you know, I don't have two hundred two thousand followers on Instagram. I'll put it that way. And so, you know, I if I were to post, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same. So I would advise yeah. you yeah. to just ask your audience, ask your fans to help you out, and then you can have a much bigger market in the United States. But yeah, yeah. if you do travel, actually, if you do travel here, right, are there any people that you want to meet, right, that you're a fan of maybe? Oh, uh, so many people, actually, yeah. Uh, I started off uh, a, couple of year, uh, a couple of years back. I really got into uh, this female artist, Hosey. I, you know her. I think she's like yes. a pop artist. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know who Ozzy is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've sent a couple of emails to her team, and the one reply I actually got back was from her drummer, and uh, he's a great guy. I, I'd love to see him and hopefully uh, play on. I know I can't be the the drummer for Hosey. That's like a really big step. Uh, but uh, even just to meet the the person who helped me, like her drummer, his name is Nate, uh, would be really a privilege. And I'd be so happy to just shake his hand, you know, and take him to uh, thank him for the stuff that he taught me. And yeah, so many favorite bands and artists are from like LA. Uh, not sure about the other cities, but like all of my favorite artists are, are American. So uh, I can't begin even describing individ individuals. Yeah. Well, most, I mean, most artists, you know, most actors, musicians, whatever, almost always come to the United States to do many. Yeah. yeah. The United States is kind of like a celebrity factory. Right, you know, it's yeah. in in a way, you know, we that's a funny way of putting it, but it is, because it is, yeah, know, because so many people always move down here. YouTubers, for example, a lot of yeah. YouTubers will always move down to. I mean, you could be a YouTuber anywhere, but the big YouTubers, Logan Paul or Jake Paul or whatever, they they always move to LA at least for a little bit. They usually leave, but they usually move to California. You know, I think when I was um down in Miami, Lil Wayne and uh, Kai Sinat, they they were bad um. Lil Wayne was at a nightclub or whatever in the city. I didn't see him, but you know, he did. He was performing there at a nightclub. I can't go. I'm 17, but you know, <laughs> and I was with my you're family too. Team, man. That that's actually so cool. You're 17 and you're doing so, so much cool stuff. I saw your work as well. Congratulations to that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, look, it's 
I just I just interview people. I just talk to people. You know, that's that's all I do. I don't, you know, I I just reach out and I'm like, hey, if you're down, you know, let's talk. And yeah, yeah, I've got I've gotten some interesting replies from some interesting people. You know, <laughs> um, there's a YouTuber I was a fan of. His name is uh, Julian Dory, right? And okay. I was a fan of him for months and months and months. And you know. I, I do an interview with one of his guests and I say to him, I, I don't know if I said it to him, but basically Julian found out and then I ended up doing a recording in his studio and you can find it on my YouTube page, but that guy would, but exactly. And it's awesome. And the guy was so generous, but I think yeah. that also, if you want to do things with big artists, I think you could just, you know, you would ask around a little bit, just say, Hey, like if this per, you know, could we do this? Right. Like, Hey, could we do that? If they say no or don't reply. It, it is what it is. But yeah, you know, like, I know you're a fan of, um, Nirvana, right? Like, yeah. 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 So, I mean like Foo Fighters, for example, many of the people that played in Nirvana are still there. So are now playing Foo Fighters. So, you know, that could be interesting if you reach out to them or it could be the living members of like Lincoln Park or Queen. Queen is still touring. So, yeah. I think so. That would definitely be cool to see you perform with some of these bands or work with them at some point. And I know you said before that playing for Halsey would be a very, very high dream that you probably can't do. I disagree. You never asked her. <laughs> you know, you, you don't know. So yeah, um, yeah. You might be right. You might be right. Yeah, I've never tried. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you don't know if you never ask. The answer is always going to be no. Right. Yeah, if you never yeah. ask the answer, will always be no. So I, I like that. Yeah. If if you just say like, hey, let's work together. I like your work. You can I mean that's how I that's how I got you on here. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So just ask. That's what I would say. Definitely definitely will do that. And do will do my best to get them, uh, to get myself to the States. Especially after right. this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's worth a shot, and yeah. it it would definitely help you a lot, considering that most of your comments are all in English, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I could go on yeah. one of your videos now, and they would be ninety percent English, which means it's either, you know, it's it's definitely United States, England, whatever. Do you have all viewers in England, or is it mostly United States? Uh, I think English talking countries in general, like the, the United States and England, yeah. But I have, I think, uh, Brazil also and Indonesia, uh, which is really cool. But I don't speak the language even a bit. Well, I mean, I'm just looking right now at your Instagram, like for the comments and stuff, and they're all in English. So it would, so you know, if your fans are there, it would work. It would, it would definitely yeah. work. And it also for different content creators and stuff like that you could also ask you know youtubers and stuff you could say hey like you want to interview me like let's work let's do a podcast together that could be too you know um but yeah that's what that's what i would say and yeah and i i hope that part works out for you thanks you man know? really appreciate it yeah no problem yeah so now moving on from the future in the united states so let's go more towards where you see your skills right like so you started out you've always had an interest in drumming right you in music yeah. right and then you get better and better and now you're making your own music basically because you're doing lincoln park and style nirvana and you know or whatever like you're doing different things in different styles right you're making already existing songs and turning into different styles which is a pretty yeah. difficult task because you have to change the beats per minute you have to make everything work out and yeah, yeah and you have to mimic the style that's the hardest part you have to make it sound like it's coming from them yeah so how how do you like how do you produce these i guess that that would be a question that i have um <clears throat> uh it's really weird because i really don't rarely i sit and just think about what i'm going to do next it just comes to me like an idea which can be really frustrating because at times i i lack ideas I, I don't have any idea what i'm going to do next 
but most of the times I just, uh, when I have an idea, I found a really cool app called Moises. Uh, I don't know if I can pronounce it uh, correctly, but uh, yeah, and it just, it just basically separates the tracks into different uh, tracks, like bass, guitar, drums, vocals, and you can change the key of the song and you can change the tempo. And I just take two songs, or if it's a mashup from like uh, one band's three to four songs, like the the series that I do, like uh, bands that change their drummers, and I would like take three or four songs from each era and just cut the pieces and try to figure out where they can work the best one after another. And maybe if I have to just uh, do an acapella or remove the vocals, I also every every time I remove the drums, I play on drumless tracks, so only my drums can be heard from the recording, and that's basically it. Like <laughs> the audio, the audio idea before the recording takes usually about three to four hours of work. And then I do the recording, which is again maybe three to four hours, because I record at the the music school that I teach, and I have to keep my cameras and lightning all in a storage area. I can't just leave them up there. And every time I do the preparation, a sound check, uh, a check about the cameras, the lightning, and it's a really long process. But that's basically it. Right what's it called do you have a favorite which of the mashups that you've made or the this in the style of that x in the style of y right like which one of them do you like the best oh that that that's really hard because i actually am of these mashups i'm really self-conscious of them because i'm not uh i'm just a drummer i'm not a producer and i i'm not really sure exactly if they are going to work and if they sound cool to me, are they going to sound cool to other people as well? Or are they musically correct and stuff like this? Uh, maybe I have favorite uh, videos from my other series, like the bands that change their dramas during the years. Like I really love the, the Iron Maiden video uh, with the, the Clive and the Nico change in the bands and i've been wanting to do to, to do a video about my all-time favorite band which is man war uh, they've changed a lot of drummers during uh, their history and i've i don't know but something stops me every time i want to record this video because i want it to be so perfect that i can't even bring myself to record one but yeah well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a perfectionist to some extent. Like that's a, it's it's a weirdly good thing to have because so many people will say that it's toxic. But if you if you really obsess over something and making it the best thing that you can, I don't think there is anything wrong with it, right? I think if you just make it the absolute best that you can be, and that's that's what you want to do, then do it, right? So yeah. if you want to, if you want to make this if you want to put it out i would say just work on it until it's perfect until you think it's perfect yeah and just yeah. let it be it just you know it, yeah just make it how you want it to be right that's that's what yeah. i would say yeah. um, that's actually really solid advice yeah <laughs> yeah it's because it's going to be perfect yeah it's well it's also that you know you can't make everybody like it you know of course yeah yeah so I mean, I just want it to be musically correct, you know, like right. not be uh, have the wrong notes and stuff like this. Not on the drums, but like if I mash up the songs and the the, the keys are different, and I miss something, that's going to be uh, going to be awful. Right. Well, I mean, the question comes down to if you have truly done the best that you can do. And like, I mean, really, like you really do think that you did the best that you could do, then that's what counts, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, as long as you're not putting out garbage and you know it's garbage and then you convince yourself it's the best you could have done, yeah. you know, because so many people will say, well, I did my best. I tried my best, you know, and they don't mean it. 
If you really, really think that you did the best that you could, you put every ounce of effort, you looked everywhere, and there's no longer anything wrong with it, and it is the best that you could do, then that's it. That, that's what counts. You put it out. It doesn't really matter what people say because they didn't see you working for 12 hours a day. Right? You yeah. know the work that you put in, and that's really what counts. Yeah, yeah. Really well said. Really well said. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. But um, what was I going to say next? Oh, yeah. So I was going to say, too, that when it comes to your students, right? Yeah. How do do your students view you as more experienced because of your videos? Uh, not because of my videos, but because I think of my life playing, because we tend to have a lot of shows here in Bulgaria and there are mm, a lot of students come to my shows and a lot of people have come to the, to the school after being at the show. And maybe that's uh, a more bigger part here in Bulgaria. The, the artists I work with, the shows we do, not so much. The, I mean, the videos as well, yeah, definitely. But a lot of them, I think, come from the, from the shows and the stuff we do, uh, and the stuff I do with the, the live bands here and the artists, which is when you so say, cool. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. And when you talk about the shows here, though, when are the, I mean, over where you are in Bulgaria, when you yeah. talk about those, shows, um, what what does it look like? How big is the crowd, for example, or the group of people that's there? Oh man, it really depends. Um, I mean, I'm drumming for several several artists, uh, which have different, like, uh concert type venues and stuff now uh, the i mean we had a show back in november with one of the people i drum for in the biggest one of the biggest halls here in the capital of bulgaria and it's here like i don't know maybe three thousand people uh, or something like this uh and then we <laughs> i had a show with like a hundred people so it really depends on the artists, on the venue, on the type of show, uh, a lot of factors. Do you know what the biggest show that you performed at is though? Oh man, yeah, I can remember that. Um, like five years ago, we played at uh, a festival in uh, a town called varna uh, maybe not five years ago maybe no five, yeah exactly five years ago uh and i think uh they told us that the crowd was thirty thousand people which was like massive you you couldn't see the ends of the the crowd there it was just mind-blowing sitting on the drums and looking at all of these people uh it was really amazing how um how was it set up was it like a stadium or was it just because you know there's a million different ways that crowds are set up at concerts sometimes it's like there's a stadium and you know you're in the center other times it's like you know there you're just like a little bit above them and then they're all on the floor kind of like um I'm trying to think like most rappers have their concerts set yeah, up like that yeah. You know, DJ stuff like that, like a DJ. That's what I mean, like that, like where you're up and then they're down, and then yeah. it's just you're in the middle concert round. So, how was your setup? Uh, it was actually, it was actually a parking lot, but uh, yeah, it was a huge parking lot uh, at the at the coast of the the city because it was near like the the sea, and it was a huge huge parking lot which they built a stage on, and it was a really big stage it was a huge stage and just the, the people had gathered all around the sea and uh, on the beach even and it was really beautiful seeing the sea and the people it was it was an amazing experience so when you um what's it called so the crowd was just out like everywhere like as far as the eye could see in the parking lot right? yeah yeah it yeah. was you literally couldn't see the end of it or yeah it was at night too but <laughs> i guess that i guess that has a part 
uh, that played the part of not seeing the end of the crowd. <laughs> but I then saw the photos from the drone, and it was mind blowing just how many people there were there. And yeah, I actually and... have a, a live video on my YouTube from that night, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't set up my, my GoPro wasn't set up to catch the, the whole of the crowd. And I regret this to, to, to this day. Well, at the end, you should have. Um... Oh. Yeah, sorry. The... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If, I think the trailer just went off. I don't know if you heard it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So let me go to your most popular. Isn't your most because most pop? Okay, the most popular thing you did on your YouTube is Phantom of the Opera Nightwish drum cover. I don't know how that happens, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let me look at. Let me look at what your oldest is. Asking Alexandra if you can't ride two horses at once, drum cover. Um, your latest was three days ago, and that was Stanley Live, um, NDK, in your shorts. Yeah. yeah. This was like uh, the, the Stanley Life was from that, uh, from the, the, big, the hall from Bulgaria that I told you about. It was like back in November, and it was his 40th anniversary on stage concert. He's like this bu massive Bulgarian artist. And I'm so happy that I can play with him, been with him for like five years now. And it's been just an incredible experience. So much learning, so much uh, just taking for my, an amazing experience overall. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. And I'm, I mean, overall, it seems like on YouTube and, stuff it seems pretty cool like you know some of the stuff you're doing actually on your youtube i'm, I'm looking at your shorts your most popular yeah. short has 1.4 million views and it's bane it's bands that change their drummer um and it, the title is clive had some great drum parts though Rest in yeah, peace. yeah he made a video yeah so yeah. what what's the context um as I said earlier, it's like uh, a part of a series, a series of videos that I came up with that just showing bar bands in history that had changed their drummers at some point. And uh, I, all I do is I take uh, a song from each drummer or each drummer's era that they've recorded, and I just do a mashup of all of the eras that drummers have recorded in the band because a lot of times there are comments like uh this drummer was in the band and this drummer was in the band but you haven't included him but uh i only take the drummers that have recorded stuff for the band because yeah i i can write the subtitles on the screen like this drummer was also in the band which i do but i can only play the stuff that they have recorded so Iron Maiden has like two drummers and they're really good, amazing drummers that uh, I love songs from both of the eras. So I thought, why not? And it blew up and I couldn't be more grateful for that. Funny question, but the, um, this is related to the drummer part, but do you have a manager? Actually, no. I work You're independent. all the stuff by myself, yeah. So you're okay. That's interesting because normally, I mean, I've seen people that are much, much smaller than you that have managers, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 interesting. Um, there's actually a very big artist. He's a rapper, um, Lil Mabu. He he's an independent artist, yeah. right? His email is just his email. He doesn't have any people that. Is that so cool? <laughs> so you know, I mean, he's like, do you know who he is, Lil Mabu? I don't think I've I've heard of his name now. He is. Oh, he's he um. He's he's only I think two years older than me now that I think about it. Okay. And okay. he um he has millions and millions of followers as a rapper. He works with like the biggest rappers out there. He goes to Stanford too, which is pretty cool. But um, okay, so, so he manages a lot. I don't know how. I don't know what his schedule looks like because he's going to not only Stanford, but he's also a multi like a, a, one of the biggest rappers or a very very big rapper. He's only two years older than me, which is all very cool. And he manages everything by yeah. himself. Yeah. So. You know, it's that's pretty awesome. And 
what does that look like for you when it comes to managing everything that you do? Because I emailed you and you just responded back as yourself. You're just like, hey, George, yep, let's do this. And those are my favorite conversations to have. I hate working with managers only because I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's always like they ask you for way more information than you could possibly need. They're like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, uh, in the event that this doesn't work out, when you know, what's the best emergency number to contact you at? And it's annoying for me because I, I just want to, you know, it, I, it's so easy to schedule this. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of, yeah. complicated. But have you considered getting a manager? What does it look like managing everything yourself? Oh man, I I would love to get one, but oh, I mean, if I get a manager, it will be mostly to schedule stuff and reels for me, not not anything else. Because sometimes, as I told you, I like ideas, and I don't want to put something out just for the sake of the content. I want to really feel it which is like a really negative thing if you want to be a creator because you got to put stuff constantly put stuff out constantly and this is like my mental barrier that i don't don't want to cross like putting stuff out just for the sake of having something out and a manager would be really cool just to get me to you have to play this and film this today or tomorrow and uh you have to uh, upload it like in three days and stuff like this. But in other words, I I like doing things on my own because I know exactly what I want. And thank God I have the motivation for the, and I had had the motivation for the last several years to do this. So maybe I'm really okay now without uh, a manager i would love one yeah sometimes things get really tough when i have like more dates uh concert dates but overall uh things are looking okay now well one thing i will um i will say about getting a manager is that a lot of people have the problem that managers can act as like a boss right to your point yeah, yeah. They, and they can they can kind of hound you on different things like i've had people that can't even repost on their own instagram stories yeah right yeah, yeah. and because yeah. because i had um this one guy reach out to me actually and he had actually you know, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get too much details about him but i asked he asked me something and i said oh just repost it on your story and he's like would love to but i can't and he's like my manager won't let me and i'm like why not and then i'm like well i didn't say why not but i i said something along those lines or he explained it already and he goes he's like i can't repost on my instagram story my manager's a good guy but he just won't let me basically right and you know and that's 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 unfortunately the nature of how it works when you're not an independent artist or an independent yeah, artist. yeah when you have management it can really suck because they do ask you to do certain things when especially when you're not somebody that can exist without the manager right because yeah yeah right because some people need that some people are far too busy you know i would might say get get a publicist maybe that might help yeah, you a little bit because yeah. they're less like a manager but there's something that people can reach out to but look if you want to continue keeping on doing things yourself that's completely fine but also too um you were talking about having to produce content constantly i might slightly disagree with you on that i think that one really really good video is much better than 10 okay videos yeah yeah i can totally agree on that i've seen it through the years work like that yeah um bad bad thing happens if you, you don't have a good video in a bunch in a while and then even the stuff you do want to post it doesn't be it doesn't perform well and you're kind of stuck in a loop and just questioning yourself what am i doing wrong and can get really discouraging at times well look i mean at the end of the day you have to know that what you're doing is worth it i mean you like what you're doing yeah you know keep up with it and it, it seems like it's your passion right it seems like you really enjoy doing this so i would say keep up with it and just keep working and 
don't give up. That's I mean, it's tr pretty traditional advice, but I would just say don't give up. You seem like you're good. No, it it may be traditional, but <clears throat> when you're surrounded by people that, I mean, th they are your friends, but. And I'm not saying anyone has this uh, envy in them, but I don't hear this a lot. <laughs> and you're the first uh, person telling me this uh, in, in in a while. So I do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, and it's good to hear. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Yeah, no problem. I mean, it's look, most people when it comes to fans, especially, I think it was Drake who. Um, he was giving advice to somebody because somebody was telling a story that they had spoken to Drake and Drake's obviously like one of the most famous people in the world. Right. Like yeah. he has something like 139 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. Crazy. And yeah, exactly. And he, um, he was giving advice to somebody. Someone was telling a story and he basically said to the person like, look, you know, when it comes to fans and people that, for like watch your content a lot of them are, are faceless they don't know you they don't know you know your story they don't they don't really care either you know yeah. if you, it, it's unfortunate so when it comes to is this good enough is this you have to be the judge of that like you can ask people for advice but it has to be people that you know that you value the opinion of you know that we'll say, you know. yeah because i mean if Eventually, you're going to find somebody that doesn't like it, right? But you have to know that it's good. You have to know that, right? And you have yeah. to believe that, it's good, that you've done everything you can. Yeah. I've seen creators post just for the sake of the content and just showing that it's not organic and it's not natural. Oh, which I mean, <clears throat> if you want to do this, no, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you're a creator. You, you chose this. So cool and if you if you have like the benefits of it well, why not uh but yet again when you see a video of someone who really genuinely made that video if it's a song if it's a cover or whatever it is just like you can see that in the video when it's genuine right well there's definitely a difference between people that make content for themselves and there's people that make content for their audience and then there's yeah. another two categories i would say which is then there's people that make content because they like making content or yeah. their type of content and then there's people that make it just for the money or for the attention whatever so yeah. you know i mean there's plenty of people that do like what they do but then there's also a lot of people that just do it because it gets them a certain thing right they like the result they don't like the actual content itself right yeah. which there's a major difference between the two you know i i'm not gonna like name people i don't know personally like why everybody's doing it but there yeah. and it's also been like a, a surge in um people because people now realize how profitable it is to be an internet creator somebody on the internet yeah especially on TikTok. you know with the now with the longer videos and stuff like this mm, it's crazy it can be your full-time yeah, well, job yeah yeah well with sponsors especially too do you have any yeah. sponsors oh man actually yeah and um sorry no idea what's happening um uh like sponsors uh yeah i uh, last year i started working with a symbol company it's called uh Diru symbols uh from italia from italy and it was like dream come true like uh, the kid in me was just screaming when this happened and i'm so grateful for the guys to this day uh, i went to italy last year we filmed a bunch a bunch of contents there and we're planning of doing it this year again and it's just just the best you know also i work with a uh, headphone in-ear monitor kind of company adv which are actually from New York. Their logo is uh, born in New York. So uh, yeah, yeah. I'm so grateful for for both of them. Right, and I mean, it seems like you know, it's everything in terms of like financially is also working out very well. 
in both. I mean, you know, I'm not going to ask you about your finances. I, <laughs> but, cool. you know, I will say it does seem like it's it's been working out for in that regard, too. Um, do you ever plan on selling merchandise, though? I've thought of it, but every time I think of it, I really want to make, if I do make merch, I want to make merch that I personally would wear. And not to be just something for the sake of the merch, as we talked about for the content, but something that's th that I really like and I would wear. And I'm really picky about my clothes. So it's going to be a hard, a hard process and a long one. But well, I, that, that I would it, love to, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, well, if you're picky, that's perfect. Because then you know what you like. And you would yeah. know. And if you put it out there, there's going to be other people that are going to like that too. Again, you have the audience for it. You know, I would, I would say use it, you know, because you have yeah. the ability to make good merch. If you have, let's just say, I don't know. Well, I mean, it seems like you have a good sense in fashion, but, um, but yeah, no problem. But I, if you, if you're wearing like, let's just say a polo shirt, right. If you yeah. ever wear those, if you really like those and you make a brand of that, and you say, all right, everybody buy this. You're going to have a pretty good amount of people that are going to buy it. You know, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I may think of that really, uh, may rethink that. Uh, one, one thing I know I want to do in the future, but uh, I haven't had uh, really the opportunity to, is to make like a signature stick, drumstick of mine. But I really, that's even harder because you got to work with the company that produces them and try stuff logo signatures and stuff but uh, yeah it's a bit harder right yeah and i mean and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you really want to do then do yeah. that you know if you think that people would buy that drum set or that drum kit or that no drum drum stick, six like the yeah six. Drum, just drum six. six yeah exactly yeah but if you think that people would buy it i'm saying just i'm just naming things but if you're gonna yeah, buy yeah. If people want to buy that, there's going to be a large audience of people that are like, because they're all musicians. Most of your audience is going to be musicians or people that just like their music. Yeah, so, yeah. or, you know, even your students. So if you make your own brand of it, it's going to be pretty cool. If that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, think of this uh, in depth. Yeah. I'm, I'm just listing out ideas, but um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, Clothes is definitely something worth of uh, doing because oh, uh, it's it's cool and all the time when I me and the artists we're working on with try to figure out what are we going to wear on stage and it's a constant battle and we're not really sure each time and so if I have uh, something mine that will be. A really, a really easy pick, at least for the stage outfits. Yeah. Another thing, too, that might be cool for you is if you have any, like, YouTubers or, you know, internet creators that you like that um, also do stuff on the drums or even that you might think will help you, then I would say just email them and just say, hey, like, you know, I want to work with you. You know, that would be cool. And, you know, I it might work. Who knows? You know, yeah, I think... Yeah. I think that could help you too. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that would be good. I mean, do you, here's another, here's a question I should have asked at the beginning, but do you have any advice for people who want to pick up the drums? <laughs> uh, yeah. And I almost constantly talk about this during my, my lessons. And the one thing I can give as an advice is just to, not be discouraged when things start to get hard because that's like the easiest thing to do just to to uh quit when things start to get hard because once you get that initial uh inertia and when things start to happen that's going to be after the the hard part i mean if all the people, if all the musicians that are not now famous and really good have quitted when things started going, things started becoming hard on the, the musical instrument, there will be almost none. 
you know because it's not always about passion it's about uh doing what's hard even though it's taking the life out of you so just don't quit be persistent in the stuff that you're doing and know why you started that's why i love uh, music movies they always get me in the zone where i remind myself why i started you ever watch whiplash oh man yeah <laughs> it's a really cool movie really depressing at times but it's a really good metaphor for maybe the the bottle in your head you know because it's different to to find uh you won't find the teacher that's that cruel as the the teacher there but i think it's a really good metaphor for the the cruel voice in your head that some some people have well i think that it's overall just a depiction like it's a, it's a portrayal of artistic obsession to its extreme i'll put it yeah. that way yeah to an yeah. absolute extreme you know staying up all night until your hands are bleeding you know while and you know you see six into ice whatever yeah. you know it's it's a very hardcore movie it's not for a lot of people you know this yeah. scenes where where um gene not not gene simmons um what's his name jk simmons <laughs> yeah uh, yeah jk simmons is um yelling at the student you know and he's cursing at him it's a very intense scene and it's meant to be that way but it, it does it is a very very good very interesting movie you know i yeah, i haven't even seen the whole thing i've just seen like the most important clips of it okay and, okay. and it's 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 just interesting and I, like i've seen the ending of it too it's just the whole way through you're kind of rooting for the the main character but in a way he's also being toyed with by the teacher it's 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 interesting but the point of the movie i think is just to portray the most extreme form of an artistic obsession like just to yeah. its absolute yeah and i i love that i mean i myself am treating myself like this like because uh i feel if i don't work hard enough it's never going to happen i won't even deserve it the things that are happening so i love that movie <laughs> for that reason you know i'm not that cruel to my students of course i would never be uh but i'm that cruel to myself yeah and i mean most people will unfortunately say it's a very toxic mindset but it's i mean it does it, it's that's just the way that those types of people are wired you know and yeah, yeah and i mean it's it's not it's not for everybody i'll say that if yeah, that's yeah. like I mean, you seem like you're very happy, right? I'll say that you seem like you're happy, <laughs> and you know, at the end of the day, just know that you're doing something good, and if that's what you like, that's what counts, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're putting out something good into the world. You're putting out content that people like. Now, obviously, I can't recommend to be so obsessed that you know you you're hurting yourself, obviously, but <laughs> you know, I will yeah. say continue to work hard right yeah thanks can man. you do good things yeah um yeah any advice to people at all just that you might have off the top of your head for young people whatever yeah I was maybe uh my life motto which is like do what you want to do just don't hurt people along the way just be a good person try for the best just be a good person don't hurt people along the way yeah that's it also one more question i, I should have asked yes. at the beginning but how, yeah. but how old are you <laughs> how old am i yeah i'm actually 27. Mm -hmm. so you're exactly yeah. 10 years older than me yeah cool yeah so you're like you're born in uh 2003 or no 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 2006. 2006 yeah 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 96. <laughs> cool yeah yeah all right man so i think this is a good place to end off i'm going to talk to you a little bit after the show but it was great having you on great great thank you so much for having me it was really a pleasure and i really appreciate it no problem man. you're welcome back anytime all right i'm gonna stop recording thank we'll talk you. a little bit after the show okay